Now Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories About the animals that live down on the farm About Farmer John who looks after all the animals They're in the story down on the farm There's the sheep there in their pens The ducks and all the hens The goat, the cow, the donkey too The pigs are in the styes The birds up in the skies And a gorilla that's no longer in the zoo Now Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories About the animals that live down on the farm Boy, you keep me at it all day There you are, there's a few There you are Just a little Okay Oh, you've got buttercup at it now as well Get out of it Poo Poo, pong Pig pong no, not ping pong, ping pong. They've had me working here all the morning to tell you, look at the mess they make. Pigs. They love the mud. They live in it, sleep in it, lie in it. Yeah. And who's got to clean it up after me? Grandpa Stan. Still, I don't mind. Look at them. They're lovely little tummies and their pink little snouts and their curly little tails. <laughs> there they are. I know a story about three little pigs. Yeah. Three of those little pigs over there. Oh. Ah, yeah. Come on. Hey. Yeah, it's... Oh, I'm feeling a bit puffed out now. But with all this work and clearing this lot up here. Mind you, I can tell you about someone else that was puffed out. It was Willie the wolf. He was a very naughty wolf, was Willie. He's in the story about the three little pigs. Do you want to hear about him? And why he became puffed out? Come with me and I'll tell you. Uh, well, look at this lot. All playing around and honking and eating. That's all they seem to do all day. Haven't got a care in the world. They don't have to worry about building a house. The farmer's already built a lovely house for them, hasn't he? But these three little pigs that I was going to tell you a story about, they didn't have a house of their own, so they had to build one. And the first little pig, he built his own house out of. Guess what? That's a clue. Straw. Now, straw's not very strong. I mean, it'll break easily. And he built all the, the floor, the walls, the ceiling, the windows, the doors, all out of straw. And what he didn't know, this little pig, that Willie the Wolf was on the prowl. Willie the Wolf. So this little pig had built his house of straw and was sitting in it. And suddenly there was a knock on the door. And it was Willie the Wolf. Hairy, grumpy Willie the Wolf with smelly wellies. Wellington boots. Now the little pig didn't know that Willie the Wolf was on the prowl. And Willie the Wolf banged the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. But the little pig wasn't silly enough to let a stranger into the house. So he shouted back through the window, Go away! Go away! Willie the Wolf, go away! You're all hairy and growly and you've got smelly wellies. And the wolf didn't like that. The wolf said, let me in, little pig, let me in. Otherwise, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And the little pig said, go away, Willie the wolf, you're not coming in my house with those smelly wellies. And the wolf took a deep breath and he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. <laughs> and it blew the house down, the little house of straw. Oh, dear me. And the little pig scampered all over the place looking for his brother. His other brother would build his house out of twigs. He'd searched everywhere in the forest and gathered all the twigs he could. And he'd made the floor of twigs, the walls of twigs, the doors and the window of twigs. Now then, twigs are not very strong. But they're stronger than straw. And the little piggies thought they were safe from Willie the Wolf. Willie the Wolf. He's a nasty bit of work. And he was prowling around the house made of twigs. And he knocked the door. He said, little piggies, little piggies, let me in. 
But the little piggies are not silly enough to let anyone in, especially strangers, and especially someone who's hairy and growly and has got smelly wellies. So they said, Mr. Wolf, Mr. Wolf, we're not going to let you in. You know why? Because you got, you're hairy, you're growly, and you've got smelly wellies. Now then, the wolf didn't like that reply. So he said, if you don't let me in, I'm going to huff, I'm going to puff, and I'm going to blow the house down. So the little pig said, you go ahead then. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house of twigs down. And he blew the house of twigs down. And the two little piggies up and ran to try and find their other brother. <laughs> they looked everywhere. They looked and they looked for the third little pig. Because they knew that somewhere behind them was that silly old Willie the wolf with the smelly wellies. little piggy's house made a brick solid just like this oh dear excuse me a minute i must have a little rest i'm out of puff Whew, all that running around looking for those little piggies anyway where were we i know where we were talking about that willie the wolf he'd already blown down the first little piggy's house made of straw he'd blown down the second little piggy's house made of twigs but he's not going to find it easy to blow down this house made a brick but he's a nasty bit of work that willie the wolf he really is he's all hairy and grumpy and he's all but he's got smelly wellies for a start off and then he went up to the door of the little house made a brick and he knocked it and he shouted let me in little pig let me in but the little piggies weren't as silly as they looked so they weren't gonna let a stranger in there especially that willie the wolf the one with the smelly wellies so they said in unison away you go Winnie the Wolf, away you go. Winnie the Wolf didn't like that. He said, I'll have fun, I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. Remember, he was able to blow down the straw house. He was able to blow down the little house made of twigs. But he's not going to be able to blow down this one. <laughs> so he huffed and he puffed and he blew and he blew. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew and he blew. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew and he blew. Till he got all out of breath. Then he kept getting thinner. And he was blowing and getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Till in the end, he was so thin that he was just like a leaf, as thin as a leaf. And he floated down to the floor by the side of his smelly wellies. And what happened then? Along came a gust of wind and <gasps> blew Willie away. And the little piggies were able to live happily ever after without any fear of Willie the wolf and his smelly wellies. And that's the story of the three little pigs. Now, what time is it? Oh, my goodness me, four o'clock, time for tea. I'd better say cheerio to my little piggy friends. Excuse me a minute. I'll say cheerio in piggy language. <coughs> that means cheerio for now, see you later. And I'll say the same to you. Bye for now. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. The second little piggy had none. And the first little piggy cried, wee, 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 all the way home. Now this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had a roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And the first little piggy cried, wee, 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 all the way home. Oh, three little piggies, three little piggies, three little piggies were they. Three little piggies, three little piggies, they played and played all day.
Now Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories About the animals that live down on the farm Hi diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle The cow jumped over the moon The little dog laughed to see such fun And the dish ran away with the spoon dog laughed to see such fun and the dish run away with the spoon. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. My gosh, you're early. Mind you, I was earlier. Phew. I've done a half day's work already. All the pigs have been up early, the sheep have been up early, they've been gambling around and prancing around and the goats been eating everything in sight. All having fun and games, all of them. What about me, for old Grandpa Stan? Working hard as usual. Anyway, I tell you what, you may be able to help me. I've got a special job to do today. Would you like to help me? You would? Good. What's that? What was that? Was it a goat? Was it a sheeps? Was it a goosey gander? Was it a pig? <laughs> it was Buttercup. Come. There you are. Buttercup. Well, that's one end of Buttercup anyway. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Buttercup. Let's go around the other end. Let's see the front end. Come on. There's a the good girl. There she is. It's my friend, Buttercup. <laughs> Isn't it Buttercup? And what do you think she... Right. What do you think she's waiting for? The bus. You're not waiting for a bus, are you? You're not waiting for a bus. Now, do you like cereal in the morning? I do, I love it. And what do you have with your cereal? A spoon? Not a spoon. Milk. That's what you have in with your cereals. That's what I have, anyway. And you know you get milk in a, a bottle? in a carton. But where does it come from before it gets in the bottle in the carton? It comes from Buttercup. Isn't they Buttercup? I was taught how to milk Buttercup by Jenny, the dairy maid. She told me what to pull and what not to push. And hopefully at the end of the day, I get some milk. First of all, you need a bucket. And also you need a stool. But most of all, you need warm hands. I'll see if my hands are warm, Buttercup. They're not too bad. Would you like to warm them for me? Just let me put my brush by there, and you can help me. Would you like to blow on my hands and warm them? Come on, then. Just blow on them. That's much better. OK? Right. Now, it's all down to us getting you untethered, Buttercup, and we'll go in the meadow, right? We'll go get that uh, bucket, and we'll get that little stool, and we'll get some milk. Come on, me old love. Come on, though. Come on. Come on, then. Come on, come on then, come on. That's it, there's a good girl. Come on, there's a good girl. Come on, buttercup. Hi, little diddle, girl. the cat and come the Come on, fiddle. buttercup. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such fun. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Mm -hmm. There she is. There's a good girl, buttercup. It's better out here in the meadow. Yeah, nice fresh air. You can look at all the trees, and the flowers and the birds, and the other animals too. You might even, even get a little bit of grass if you're good. Green grass, brown cow. What color is this cow? Brown, black, white? What color is the grass? Green? And what color is milk? White. It's always puzzled me that. Why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? Why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? That's the burning question. It gives me indigestion. 
I don't know, you don't know, it really is a farce. Oh, why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? Buttercup, do you know? I'm afraid it still baffles me. I wish I knew the answer. Anyway, where were we? Oh, I know. I've got a milk buttercup. That's why we're out in the meadow. Because my flask is empty, no milk in it. And I need a nice hot cup of coffee, so I'm going to get some milk. So I'll need to warm my hands. Would you help me warm my hands again? Listen, if I count to three, would you blow on my hands? Promise? Right, here we go. One, two, three. Gosh, hey, that was good, but too strong. <laughs> Never mind. Thank you very much. They're lovely warm now. I shall go and milk buttercup. I've got one uh, bucket here, and I think I'll have to sit on that one. I'll sit on that one, and I'll put the milk in this one. I'll go around this side. I diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> you better not. Now, i got to sit on that, and I've got to get milk in this. There's the jug. Now, then, i got to... It's a long way down here. <clears throat> oh, my goodness me. I missed it. I mean, <clears throat> don't go away now, Buttercup. Don't go away. Don't kick the bucket yet. You're too young. Hang on. Whoa. Whoa, Buttercup. Now then. Now, what did Jelly say? Pull or push? I think I'll try. That's it. That didn't like that one. Hey, we're in business now, Buttercup. Lovely. Why does a brown cow give white milk? When it only eats green grass. Oh, that's the bird in question. It gives you indigestion. I don't know. You don't know. It really is a farce. Why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? Yay! We made it, Buttercup. We made it. Milk. Buttercup, we made it. Look. Milk. Look at that. All your own work. Thank you very much, Buttercup. My goodness me, what a day. What time is it? It's four o'clock again. Mind you, it's always four o'clock with me, because this watch stopped 40 years ago, and it's right twice a day. But it's tea time, I can tell. It's time I had some tea. I've got this nice cup of coffee with me milk. All I want now is a chocolate biscuit tree. Do you know where there are any Buttercup? Well, get off your lead. And I'll see if we know where there are some. Come on. Come on. Let's go back to the barn then. Come on. Why let's go back to the barn. Why does a cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? That's the bird in question. It gives you indigestion. I don't know and you don't know. It really is a farce. Oh, why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? Why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green that's the bird in question. It gives you indigestion. I don't know. You don't know. It really is a farce. Oh, why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? Why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? That's the burning question. It gives you indigestion. Squirt, squirt. I don't know. You don't know. It really is a farce. Oh, why does a brown cow give white milk when it only eats green grass? It only eats green grass. Do you know Buttercup? No. Oh, no, eh? Now, Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories about the animals that live down on the farm. Let this. My favorite. A little black dish. Let this for breakfast. Lettuce for lunch, lettuce at tea time, and for supper, guess what I like? 
Black Ditch. That was Trevor Tortoise speaking. Now Grandpa Stan knows a story about a tortoise and a hare. Ooh, almost didn't see him there. He's so small. Hey, come on, Trev. Away you go, that way. Go on. Boom. <laughs> Trevor the tortoise. This story I was going to tell you about actually took place not very far away from here. And in this particular story, the animals could talk. That's the tortoise and the hare. Well, then the thing is, the hare always kept telling everybody how wonderful he was. He said he was the most wonderful animal in the whole wide world. He would say, I'm the cleverest, I'm the smartest, and I'm the fastest animal in the whole wide world. No one would dare to take me on. Well, of course, all the other animals got fed up with him boasting, telling everybody how good he was. And in the end, there was one little animal that thought he would teach the hare a lesson. And you know who that was? Yes, you're right. It was the little tortoise. Come on, I'll tell you the story as we go down to the lower meadow. Just follow me, come on. See you later, slow coach. <laughs> Coach, that was the name of the tortoise in the story I was telling you about. The story of the tortoise and the hare. But the hare was bragging every day about how fast he could run. The poor old slow coach had to listen on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday and Sunday to all this. Until on a day like today, a summer's day, as bright as this, old slow coach decided to put an end to it. He decided to challenge the hare to a race. He would race him from the top of the wood to the bottom of the wood. That was the challenge. Down to the lower meadow. That's where I'm going. Come on, I'll tell you the story as we walk along. <laughs> that wasn't me laughing, that was Harold the Hare. When he'd heard that that little slow coach had challenged him to a race. Do you know what Harold says? How dare you? Do you think you could beat me, Harold the Hare? The most beautiful and the fastest runner in the whole wide world? Well, do you? And the little slow coach says, well, just wait and see. And before you could say jelly and black munch, they were all lined up, ready for the big race, with Harold racing ahead! And slow coach, slowly and quietly and steadily, plod, plod, plodding behind. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like singing this song. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along. Plodding and singing this song. Ah, gonna have my sandwich. Do you like sandwiches? I do. I like surprises in my sandwiches. I wonder what it is today. I'll uh, close my eyes and I'll... It's bread. It's cheese. It's tomato. Cheese and tomato. My favourite. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't speak with my mouth full, it's rude. Ah, that's better. Right, now shall we go and see how old slow coach was getting along? Old slow coach, he just kept on trying. He wasn't fast. He just kept putting one foot in front of the other. He didn't even stop. Not even to smell the flowers. He just kept going. Plod, 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 plod. Well, that was a nice sandwich. I think I'll have a little sleep. After all, I got all the time in the world. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like singing this song. 
I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along, plodding and singing this song. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like singing this song. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along, plodding and singing this song. Tortoise like, tortoise like, plodding along. A nice little snooze, Krampus Town had. Now then, where was I? Oh, I remember. I was telling you about the story of the tortoise and the hare, and how little slow coach had challenged old Harold Hare to a race down to the lower meadow. And that show off Harold, he thought he could beat poor little slow coach any time, so he was doing all sorts of things. Stopping to smell the flowers, have a sleep, doing all those things. Anyway, mm, I think I'd better get on down to the lower meadow because I've got my work to do and uh, all sorts of things. I hope I can find my way down there now. <laughs> oh, oh, look! A fork in the path. No, not a knife and fork that you eat food with. A fork. That means where the path divides. And they come two paths. So what did the hare say? Which one should I take? I know both of them. If I take the one on the left, well, let me see. Or the one on the right, was it? If I take the one on the right, that means I'll be down in the lower meadow before you can say rhinos, rhino, r hippo. But if I take the one on the left, I may bump into some of my friends. Some of my friends will say to me, Mr. Hey, Harold, dear boy, you are the fastest, the greatest runner in the whole world. They'll clap me on the back as I cross the finishing line. So that is the one. I will take the one on the left. Oh, what a bumpy old path up and down, up and down. The lower meadow. Here at last. You know what happened when Harold the Hare got down to the lower meadow? You know what he saw? He'd seen that the tortoise had won. He'd beaten him to it. You know why? Not because he was faster than Harold the Hare, but he didn't stop anywhere. He didn't stop for a sandwich. He didn't stop to smell the flowers. He didn't stop to go to sleep. And most of all, he didn't boast about what he was doing. And you know, from that day to this, the hares have never boasted of how fast they are. You know why? Because the tortoise won the race. Anyway, I don't think a tortoise would beat Grandpa Stan, not down to the lower meadow, do you? Mm. Oh, he'd have to go a bit. <laughs> My goodness me. Uh, Trevor! Trevor the tortoise, here you've beaten me down to the bottom of the meadow. You've done the same thing as that slow coach did to that hare. You've beaten us both. How did you do it? Aren't you going to tell me? Never mind. Because you've been a very fast little tortoise, I'm going to take you up and give you some tea. We'll have some lettuce, because you like lettuce, don't you? I'll have my tea as well, then. Well, we better say bye-bye to the boys and girls, because they're probably going to have their tea, too. Bye-bye, boys and girls. Come on, now, take me flask, and we'll nip back up to the barn. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like singing this song. I'm a tortoise, I'm a tortoise, I like plodding along. Plodding and singing this song. Now Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories about the animals that live down on the farm. Hey, hey, hey. Hello again. Gosh, I'm trying to get this old tractor working. 
I don't know, there's always a job to be done in one area or another on the farm. Odd jobs all the time. No one works harder on the farm than one special animal. And do you know what that is? A lion. <coughs> no such thing, we don't have lions on the farm. Well, not this farm. What do you think? Elephants? No, oh, they're too big. We wouldn't be able to get anything in here with elephants in here. Giraffes? Gosh, you'd have me straining my neck with a giraffe. No, something much smaller than that. Dormouse? <laughs> Ooh, I'm not very keen on those. An ordinary mouse? Well, I don't think you're going to guess what it is. It's a sheepdog. Yeah, come on, Sheba. Up your cat, girl. Say hello to the boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. Woof, woof. <laughs> I, bet I, I bet that didn't fool you. That was me doing that. Mind you, she was very clever. She could do all sorts of things. She can't talk, but she can count. She can do all sorts of things. But why they called her a sheepdog, I don't know, because she doesn't look the least bit like a sheep. Anyway, sheep are different. They got woolly coats on and they look white and they got... Sometimes they are black. We do get the black sheep as well. And they make funny noises, don't they? They go... As if they're talking to one another. I think I can hear one or two of them now. Shall we go and have a look, see if we can see some sheep? Come with me, then. Come on, Sheba. Let's go and have a look at some sheep. Come on. Good girl. Come on, babe. Come on. Come on. Let's see our little friends. Come on, Sheba. Here you come. Come on, baby. That's it. There we are. There's your little friend, the sheep. Look, there you are. Sit now. Sit, Sheba. Good girl. Well, there they are. Sheep. They don't look a bit like Sheba to me. Do they to you? Mind you, they don't always live indoors. They may live in the field, sheep, or on the side of the mountain. That's where the trouble comes in, too, because Farmer John has to go out and get them in. He can't walk around rounding them all up one by one. There's usually hundreds of them. That's where our Sheba comes in. She goes out and rounds them up because she loves the sheep. And the sheep love her, too. But the noise they make, these are very clever dogs, sheep. Aren't you? Very clever. This noise, I couldn't stand all the bear. I must go outside. A little bit of fresh air. Come on, Sheba. Come on. There's a good girl. There. Mind you, Sheba's not only a sheep dog, she's also a piglet dog. Do you know what a piglet dog is? Oh, you may. But what about my little friends? They don't know. A piglet dog. Come on. I'll show you what a piglet dog is. Come with me. Right, come on, come on. Come on, Sheba, come on. Come on. No, no. Go get him. He's dead here. Go. Go on, Sheba. Go on, Sheba. Go on, Sheba. Go Good, that's it. Good. Teddy girl, Teddy. Teddy girl. That's it. Good. Teddy girl, Teddy. Teddy girl. Come on, Sheba. Good. Come on, Sheba. Good. That's a good girl. That's it. Well done, Sheba. And that's what I call a piglet dog. <laughs> ah, she's a very clever dog, is Sheba. Very clever. Did you know that she could count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She hasn't got any fingers. She's got a magic bark. Come to you, Sheba. I wonder can we get her to count now? Let me see what we can play. Let's play at finding out how many legs of different animals got. Shall we play that? Right. Sheba, how many legs has a little chick got? One, two. There you are, a magic bark. Hey, this could be a good game for us. Shall we go and find out how many legs some of the other animals have got? Shall we? You eat some of this now, until I'll come back a bit later on. We'll go and find out how many legs a little calf has got down here. Come on. Come on, Sheba. Let's go and find out. Come on. Come. Come on, Sheba. There you are. Sit. Down, down. Sit. Sit. Down then. There you are, look. Those are little calves. 
baby cows. Now then, Sheba, you tell me, how many legs does a little calf have? One, two, three, four. Right. Good girl, Sheba. There you are. Bye-bye, little calves. Wait, come on. I've got to go down to the lower meadow. Me. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. I reckon it's all that work I did this morning in the farmyard with Sheba. All those counting of animals' legs. Four for this, four for that, four for some other. Talking about four, it must be four o'clock. And that means it's time to have a little break. Any excuse is better than none. Ooh have you got a little drink there as well? Well, you can join me and I'll have mine and you can have yours. There you are. Ooh, dear me. I hope I remember to put sugar in. Cheers. Now then, where were we? We were finding out this morning how many legs different animals had. Cows got four. Chickens got two. Sheep's got four. And I've just found a little spider in here. Sid, the spider. Do you know how many legs Sid's got? Sid's got eight. Eight legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's lovely as Sid, the spider. He won't hurt you. Sometimes you'll find him in the bath. He comes up through the plug hole. Well, if he does, what you need to do is just pick him up very gently, open the window, and just put him out. And away you scurry. Usually you'll find him hanging in a tree or in a little web. Another little animal out here is a thing called a daddy long legs. Goodness gracious me, he's got a load of legs. I'd never be able to count those. Do you know how many legs he's got, daddy long legs? How many legs have daddy long legs got? How many legs have daddy long legs got? I've got two, a cow's got four, Worm's got none, but a shrimp's got more. You may know how many beans make five and think you know a lot. But how many, how many, how many, how many, how many legs have Daddy Long Legs got? I don't know. I tell you what, he must have a bit of a job every night when he goes home and he has to undress and take all those shoes and socks off. There must be hundreds of them. And just imagine in the morning, by the time he's got all his shoes and socks on, it's time to take them off again. <laughs> Mind you, I don't think I'd change my two legs for four with anyone. Because you know what I can do with my... Well, I'll just show you now. If I can get up, I'll show you a little something. Oh, dear. Me old bones. <laughs> now then, I'll just show you a little dance. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Shoop, doop, 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 Oh my goodness me, I think I've pulled a forelock. <laughs> anyway, look at the time, the sun is going on. My goodness, I better get back. And the bell, oh, I won't finish this. You can have those ants, you can have a drink, and I'll get me other thing. I wonder about those daddy long legs now. How many legs? How daddy long legs got? I'll see you later. How many legs have daddy long legs got? How many legs have daddy long legs got? I've got two, a cow's got four, a worm's got none, but the shrimp's got more. You may know how many beans make five, and think you know a lot. But how many, how many, how many, how many, how many legs have daddy long legs got? Now Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories About the animals that live down on the farm When I ran round the beanstalks You couldn't see me for beans 
Beans to the left, beans to the right, beans, beans, oh, what a sight. There were haricot beans and broad beans and baked beans, too. Even a packet of jelly beans just for me and you. Hello. I thought it was you. Well, how do you like my bean plants? Well, they're not my bean plants, they're Farmer John's bean plants, but I help him grow them, and then at the end we share them out. They're funny things, bean stalks. They start very small, and they grow and grow, and, well, sometimes they grow up to me and even higher. Some of them grow bigger than others. I know one big bean stalk that grew and grew and grew. It was a magic bean stalk. It grew so high, it grew right up to the sky. Shall I tell you about it? Well, it all started with a cow. Once upon a time, in a land far away, lived a little boy called Jack and his mum. And they lived in a little cottage, not unlike that cottage over there. A bit tumbled down it was. And they were quite poor, all they had were each other and they had a cow, not Buttercup, a cow called Daisy. Mind you, they used to have lots of animals at one time, but they kept mysteriously disappearing. They'd get up one morning and found one gone, then another, then another, till in the end they had no animals left at all, only Daisy. And like I say, they were very poor, so Mum said one day to Jack, Jack, she said, I'm afraid we're going to have to sell Daisy. Sell Daisy, said Jack. Mum... That's the only animal I've got left. All my other animals have gone, disappeared. I don't want to sell Daisy, but Jack, Mum said, we have to sell Daisy, we've got no money. I need to get a bag of gold to pay all those terrible bills that are coming in. Oh, Mum, can't we do it some other way? No other way, said Mum. So Jack took Daisy off to the market. Come on, Daisy. Come on. Come on. Do you know what these flowers are called? They're called daisies. That was the name of the cow, wasn't it, in the story I started to tell you about Jack and the Beanstalk. Remember when Jack was taking Daisy the cow to market to sell? Well, on with the story. They carried on walking, walking, walking. In the heat of the day, they were so hot that after about an hour, they decided to have a rest. So they stopped under some shade near the trees. And out of the corner of his eye, Jack could see an old lady watching them, an old lady in a cloak. She came forward to Jack and she said, Oh, a black and white cow. I would like a black and white cow. I'm just going to the market to buy one. Look, I've got a bag of gold to buy a black and white cow with. And Jack said, Well, ma'am, he said, I'm on my way to the market too, and I want to sell my cow. Of course, I don't want to sell her, but I have to sell her. Because my mum is short of money, and we need some gold to pay the rent and pay all the bills with. Why don't we swap? Why don't I give you the cow, and you give me the bag of gold? That'll save us both going to the market. So they both agreed, and the old lady took the cow, Daisy, and Jack took the bag. And off he ran, not stopping, all the way home to his mum. So thrilled that he'd got a bag of gold to give her so she could pay all the bills with. So he dashed into the house and he said, Mum, Mum, look, I've got a bag of gold, Mum, a bag of gold for you, for our Daisy. So Mum was excited. She took the bag of gold and opened it up and she said, This is not a bag of gold, Jack. Jack, look, this is a bag of beans. What had happened? The old lady, the naughty old lady, had tricked Jack into giving him a bag of beans instead of a bag of gold. She said, look, a worthless bag of beans. You've given away my daisy for a worthless bag of beans. She was so angry, she picked up the beans and she threw them out of the window. They were so sad, they went to bed and fell asleep. And I don't know, but I think, my goodness me, it's four o'clock. I think I'll have a little sleep as well, if you don't mind I. I think I will. Oh, that's lovely. Ah. 
A very funny thing happened that night. While Jack and his mum were asleep, those beans began to grow because they'd landed in the garden. And before you could say chocolate cutter ice cream, they grew and they grew and they grew and they grew. And when Jack woke up in the morning, he couldn't believe his eyes because a beanstalk, a huge, huge, huge beanstalk, was stretching way up into the sky. And Jack rubbed his eyes. He rubbed and rubbed and rubbed them. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. So he pinched himself to see that he wasn't asleep. Ouch! He wasn't. There in front of him was the biggest beanstalk he'd ever seen. The biggest beanstalk in the whole wide, wide world. Jack said, I must climb that to see what's on the top. Now what a silly thing to do. You wouldn't do a silly thing like that, would you? I hope not, but he did. Up he went, up, 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 higher and higher, up past the tops of the hills, up past the tops of the mountains, up through the leaves, higher and higher he went. He was so high that when he looked down, houses looked just like peanuts, and people were just like little ants. Up and up he went. Finally, the beanstalk disappeared through the cloud up into the fluffy, tickly cloud. Up it went. Finally, guess what happened then? The beanstalk came to a stop on top of a white cloud. Jack got up. On top of the white cloud, he looked to the right. He looked to the front. He looked to the back. He looked up, and then he looked to the left. When he looked to the left, guess what he saw? He saw the biggest castle you've ever seen in your life. It was gigantic. Now that he'd climbed all this way up the beanstalk, so he wasn't going to go back down the beanstalk without finding out who lived in that big castle. So he went across the fluffy white cloud towards the big, big door of the castle. The big, big door. Well, when Jack got to the castle, he couldn't believe his eyes or his ears. Did you know what he heard? <coughs> you know what that was? That was a cow. Then he heard a... <coughs> a donkey, that's right. Then he heard... <coughs> chicken. Then he heard... Quack, 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 quack. A duck. Then he heard... <coughs> you know what that was? You don't? was a woodpecker with a sore lip. They were all making a noise in that room. He pushed the door with all his might. He opened the big door, and right there in the center of the biggest room you've ever seen were all the animals. They were all Jack's animals from his farm down below, down on earth, down the other side of the beanstalk. When they saw him, they all gave him a big welcome. They were all saying hello to Jack. And they were all gathering round him and telling him how wonderful it was to see him again. And of course they were so enthralled and they were so busy that Jack didn't notice another door opening. And it was... The door opened and Jack looked up. And there was a giant. And the giant looked down and saw little Jack. And he said, Fee-fi-fo-fum. Little Jack said, It's a giant! <laughs> the chase were on. Jack could beat this old giant any time, any day, anywhere. Wave a red rag to a bull on a big bull giant. Ooh, ooh, you can't catch me! <laughs> Jack was everywhere, over the chairs, round the table, underneath the sideboard. That bloody giant couldn't catch Jack. Not likely. <laughs> you can't catch me, Mr. Giant! <laughs> hey, I think you're getting tired, aren't you, Mr. Giant? You're getting tired? Oh, yes, you are, look. You're getting sleepy. You're beginning to rock. And not around the clock, either. Oh, my gosh, look at this. You're going to fall asleep, aren't you, Mr. Giant? Timber! Jack and the animals took their chances. 
They rushed through the big door, across the fleecy white cloud, to the top of the beanstalk. They were just going to let themselves down the beanstalk when they realised they didn't have any hands. Jack had hands, but all the animals had hooves. So Jack thought what I'd better do is to turn the beanstalk into a slide. So he lined all the animals up, the duck, the chicken, the moo cow and the Gigi. And he said, right, follow me down. Over here, right, first away you go, duck. Down went the duck. Quack, 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 wee! Then the chicken. Quack, 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 wee! Then the moo cow. Moo, wee! Then the Gigi. Wee! Then it was Jack's turn. Here I go, says Jack. Home at last. Wee! And Jack found himself at the bottom of the beanstalk. He looked up. What did he see? The giant was just getting onto the top of the beanstalk and starting to come down. So Jack pulled feverishly at the roots of the beanstalk. He looked up. The giant was getting nearer and nearer. He was pulling and pulling nearer and nearer. Till in the end, Jack pulled the last little bit and out came the root. And away went the beanstalk and the giant up into the cloud, just like a balloon. You know what I mean with a balloon? Well, when you blow a balloon up and you let it go, it was just the way the giant went and the beanstalk. I've got an old balloon here I've left over from Christmas. I'll show you what I mean. You see, that's the balloon. There was the giant on the top with the beanstalk, and it suddenly went whee away, just like that. And the old giant was never, ever seen again. And what about the animals? Do you know what that giant had been doing? He'd been coming down and getting all these little animals and taking them up to his castle in the sky and playing with them, just as if they were toy animals. But they weren't toy, they were real. And they didn't like it up there. They liked being back down with Mum and Jack. And there you are. So that's more or less the end of the story about the magic beanstalk. Hang on a minute, I think I'd better find out what time it is. My goodness me, it's four o'clock. Time I wasn't here. I'd better go and see to old Farmer John's beans, otherwise, magic or not, he's not going to have any for his dinner. Anyway, I'll see you soon, eh? Bye. Now, Grandpa Stan's going to tell you all some stories about the animals that live down on the farm. Hello. Oh. My gosh, you look little from up here. Uh, how are you today, anyway? I'm working as usual, as you can see. A lot of work to do today. Wish I didn't have quite so much work to do. Wish I could get my feet up and have a bit of a relax. I know someone else who thought that as well. It was a monster called a troll. He was a lazy old grumpy old devil. And you know where he used to live? No, not up here. He didn't live up anywhere. He lived under. He lived under a bridge down by the river. Would you like me to tell you a story about him? Yeah? All right, don't you go away now. I'll come down and I'll tell you a story about that terrible old monster troll. Made it. Where was I? Oh, I was telling you about this, uh, this monster, this troll, this terrible troll. Who wanted to be lazy all the time and do nothing. Lazy around. I don't mind lazing around a bit during the day. Do you mind being lazy during the day? I like it now and again, but not all the time. This troll wanted to be lazy all the time. Everybody to do the work for him. The old troll. Anyway, come on, I'll tell you a bit more. Now, this story is about another animal friend of mine. I wonder if you can guess which one it is. He's smaller than a cow, bigger than a rabbit. He's cleaner than a pig. And his ears are not quite as long as a donkey's. Do you know which one it is? Well, come over here and I'll show you. Well, come on, you've got to keep up with me. That's better. Now then, he's over there. 
close your eyes, I expect you can hear them. I'm going to count to ten, then you can see what it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, but that's right, a billy goat. That's what I was talking about. Do you know what? They make nearly as much noise as my friend the sheep over there. This story is about, ooh, there they go, three billy goats. Little billy goat gruff, middle-sized billy goat gruff, and big, 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 big billy goat gruff. Called the three billy goats gruff. Hey, stop fighting. Anyway, they make so much noise I can't hear really myself think, I think. We'd better go outside and I'll tell you the tale. Shall I? <laughs> These three little billy goats, they lived in a field down by the stream. And they used to eat all day all the lovely green, green grass, jumping around, nibbling. They were as happy as the day is long. There was baby billy goat gruff, then there was middle billy goat gruff, and there was big billy goat gruff. Now, big billy goat gruff had big horns sticking out of his ears, and he had wide shoulders. And they loved it in the field, gambling away, eating what they wanted to. One day, the little baby billy goat, he looked across the river and he could see a whole field full of green, green grass. And he said to himself, Oh, I'd love to be able to go over to that field to eat some of that lovely green, green grass that has never been nibbled before. So he thought, How can I get across the river, though? I need to find a way across. Well, it wasn't long before he spied a rickety old bridge. Now, you know what a bridge looks like. This is like one side of the river, and that's the other side of the river. This is a bridge. So with that, he crossed the bridge with his little trotters going, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. But that sound woke up the old monster troll, who lived where? Underneath the rickety rackety bridge. The old grumpy monster who wanted to find someone to do all the work he didn't like doing. That little trip-trop, trip-trop woke him up. And guess what happened then? He came up from underneath the rickety-rackety bridge. And he said, Hey, my troll, foldy roll. I'm a troll, foldy roll. I'm a troll, foldy roll. And I hate doing housework. Ah, little Billy Gold Gruff, you can do it for me. I want you to mend, cook, and sew for me. All the things I hate doing, you can do. And I can be lazy all day long. Little Billy Goat Gruff thought that was terrible. Well, I would, wouldn't you? I mean, all he wanted to do was to eat some of that lovely green, green grass. So he said to Mr. Troll, Mr. Troll, you wouldn't want me to do the housework. I'm too small. I wouldn't be able to do it in any way, shape, or form to suit you. But... But, said Mr. Troll, what do you mean, but? said, but, very soon, my brother, Middle Billy Gold Gruff, will be coming this way. He's bigger than I am. He'll be able to do a much better job for you. You would be more satisfied with him. Ah, would I? Right. Said Mr. Troll. Right, oh then, little Billy Goat Gruff, I'll wait for your brother to come. Away you go then, and enjoy your little green, green grass. So little Billy Goat Gruff turned away, and his little trotters went trip trap, trip trap, trip trap, trip trap, trip trap over the bridge. Well, meanwhile, middle Billy Goat Gruff had stopped eating the grass, had stopped dancing around, and he was looking over to the field on the other side of the river. And he was saying to himself, Look at all that lovely green grass on the other side of the river. I could do with some of that. It's been untouched, unnibbled. How can I get across the river? He searched up and down, and very soon he saw the rickety rockety bridge. So he went over to it, and he went, trip drop, trip drop, trip drop, trip drop. Well, you know what happened then, don't you? I'm a troll, foldy roll, I'm a troll, foldy roll, I'm a troll, foldy roll, and I hate doing housework. Ha <laughs> ha, middle Billy Gruff, you can do it for me. 
You can mend, cook, clean, and sew for me. I hate doing all the things, and I can be lazy all day long. And little Billy Goatcruft said, ah, Mr. Troll, you wouldn't want me to do it for you, because I wouldn't do it properly. You see, I'm not very big. I'm not much bigger than little Billy Goatcruft. What you need is someone else. But, but, said Mr. Troll, but, what do you mean, but, what do you mean, but? And middle Billy Goatgruff said, but, Mr. Troll, my big brother, big Billy Goatgruff, will soon be on his way. He will be able to do all the work for you. Will he, said the troll, right. I'll let you go, middle Billy Goatgruff. Away you go. And middle Billy Goatgruff went, trip drop. Trip drop, trip drop, trip drop, trip drop, into the green field beyond. Well, meanwhile, Big Billy Goat Gruff had stopped eating. He looked around, he stopped prancing, and he looked across the river and he saw this lovely green field and he said to himself, My, my, I'd love to be able to get over to that lovely green field and eat that lovely green, green grass, unnibbled. I wonder how I can cross the river. And he searched up and down the river and suddenly he saw the rickety, rackety bridge. So he went over to the bridge and he started to climb over by trip drop, trip drop, trip drop, trip drop. Well, you know what happened then. It woke up that terrible monster, the troll. And where does he live? Underneath the bridge. And this is what happened. I'm a troll, foody rule. I'm a troll, foody rule. I'm a troll, foody rule. And I hate doing housework. You can do the housework for me, big Billy Goat Gruff. I hate doing housework. I hate cooking and cleaning and sewing and mending. You can do all that. I hate doing that. I just want to be lazy all day long. It's no good asking me, Mr. Troll. I wouldn't be any good anyway. Get out of my way. Don't stop me crossing the bridge. Otherwise, you'll be sorry. You're a bully, you are. You try to push people around too often. Well, you're not going to push me around. Not big Billy Goat Gruff, so get out of my way. What do you mean? Get out of your way. I'm not getting out of your way. You're going to work for me. You're going to do my housework. I'm not going to do anything of that sort. I'm going over there to my little brothers. Little Billy Goat Gruff and middle Billy Goat Gruff. Get out of my way. Otherwise, you'll be sorry. What do you mean, be sorry? I'll show you. With that, Big Billy Gogruff lowered his head and galloped towards the troll with his horn sticking out. He hit the troll, boom, <whistles> up into the sky the troll went, whee, and that Big Billy Gogruff, he hit that troll so hard that he went, whee, right up into the sky. He's never been seen since. So the three Billy Goats Gruff were able to go to their field and eat the green grass as long as they wanted to. This little Billy Goat here doesn't eat green grass, do you? No, he loves a drop of milk. I bet you don't drink your milk quite like this, do you? <laughs> I hope not, anyway. Uh, there you are. You enjoy it now. Anyway, Grandpa Stan will see you all soon. After feeding time, eh? I wanna be like Billy Goat Gruff. I wanna be like Billy Goat Gruff. I wanna be like Billy Goat Gruff. Rough, tough, gruff. I wanna be like Billy Goat Gruff. I wanna be like Billy Goat Gruff. I wanna be like Billy Goat Gruff. Rough, tough, gruff. <laughs> Now Grandpa Stan's gonna tell you all some stories About the animals that live down on the farm Hello, I didn't see you there I was too busy walking up the path been down the lower meadow working. Well, being as you're here and I'm here, we may as well have a little, a little chat, and I can have a little rest. I'm doing my usual work for Farmer John. 
I've been down that lower meadow since seven o'clock this morning. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven o'clock. What time is it now? It's about ten o'clock. Ten, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's three hours. Three hours working down there. So I'm due for a rest. Only trouble is when I have a rest, I get tired. Oh dear. I think I can have a little drop of this. I bet you think I'm always having a drop of beverage when I have a rest and sit down. That's why I got this flask. Well, you don't mind, do you really? No, I didn't think you did. Oh, that's lovely. Mmm. Yeah. You do get tired. Mine, when you get to my age and you're sitting down. You tell me you sit down and you get to be tired. I can't afford to go to sleep. I'd love to sleep now, but I can't afford to go to sleep now. Because if I did, old Farmer John would get all annoyed. But you wouldn't let me go to sleep, would you? If you see me dropping off to sleep, you just shout out, Grandpa Stan! And that'll wake me up. Promise? Good. I, I wouldn't go to sleep, really. Not unless I was, you know, really trying to... Well, you Krampus... Oh, Krampus, that's right. I asked you to call out Krampus, Dan, didn't I? If I fell asleep. I nearly fell asleep then. I can't afford to fall asleep, though, really, because I've got to get back up to the farmyard, and I've got to do some sweeping up and some mucking out, and it would never do if I just fell off to sleep. I can't afford to fall asleep. I can't afford to. Howdy, partner. I didn't see you there. Pardon? You'll have to speak up a bit. I can't hear you. It's all that noise from the tractor though in the lower meadow. Pun? A what? A big airy thing? Get away. There's no such thing as a big airy thing. You're talking to Grandpa Stan now. Grandpa Stan knows all about these things. Nah, you're having me on. Naughty, naughty. <coughs> now come on. Let's go up to the farmyard and get the work done. Come on. <laughs> What are you doing up here? I've just left you. Down there? You must know a shortcut I didn't know about. What do you mean? A big hairy thing. Oh, now come on. You tried to catch me like that once before. You're not going to catch me twice. <laughs> Who is? I'm not waving at you. Look, my hands are still. Someone else is waving. Who? There's no one there waving. Well, there's no one there waving. Now, come on, you're having me on. Come on, quick. Farmer John will be waiting for us. There'll be no pay for me unless I get up to the farmyard and do some work. Now, come on. <laughs> ah, you're keeping up with me at last. That's good. We'll be back in the farmyard before you can say gorilla. No, I didn't say there was a gorilla about. There's no such things as gorillas. Oh, no, there's not. If you think there's such a thing as a gorilla, you must be asleep or dreaming, or both. My goodness me. <laughs> My Wellingtons. What? There's no such thing as a gorilla, I'm telling you. Anyway, I'm off back to the farmyard. <laughs> My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. So don't try to make a monkey out of me. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. <laughs> My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. <laughs> My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. So 
so don't try to make a monkey out of me. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. Ain't I clever? My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. My name is Gus, I'm a gorilla. So don't try to make a monkey out of me. <laughs> Cause I'm a gorilla. Dobbin, come on, Dobbin. Dobbin, come on, Dob. Dobbin, come on. Dobbin, come on, Dobbin. Dobbin. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing you, you're chasing me. Well, what do you want then? You want a job? You mean you want a job here on the farm with me? Well, I don't know about that. I suppose I could do with a bit of help. Listen, boys and girls, shall I give him a job with me on the farm? Shall I? Well, okay. What's your name? Gus. <laughs> Gus the gorilla. My name is Grandpa Stan. Grandpa Stan, 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 where am I? Oh, I must have fallen asleep. Oh, what time is it? Hey. It's four o'clock. Dear me. Hey. I had a terrible dream. It was all strange. You'll never guess what I dreamt about. A gorilla? Well, how did you know? I gotta go. I've gotta get back up to the farmyard because there's lots of work to be done and there's only me to do it. So, gang, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, dear. Bye. Gush, gush, don't be like us. You're gentle and kind as can be. Gush, gush, you're more clever than us. In so many ways we agree. So, Gus, Gus, don't be like us. You're gentle and kind as can be. Hey, Gus, Gus, you're more clever than us. In so many ways we agree. Could you yodel, Gus? Oh, I thought you could. Yodel, Lady Woody Woody. Hey, Gus. Gus, now don't be like us. You're gentle and kind as can be. Gus, Gus, you're more clever than us. In so many ways we agree. 